All right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I have been waiting for this interview for a long time. Uh, we have Brother Shah here. He's part of our Jami community here in Buffalo, Alhamdulillah. So those of you that want to do Hijrah here are very welcome to come and be part of our community. Brother Shah is a very accomplished, uh, he has like one of the most well-known, I'd say, barber shops, right? And in one of the most well-known barbershops here in Buffalo. And uh, this is a brother of experience and heart and sincerity. And uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, I've seen and I'm seeing a growing epidemic of Muslim youth that are not motivated. And uh, they're not achieving their potential, right? And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just... Uh, I don't want to say lazy, but it looks like that from the outside uh, that, you know, the brothers are lazy. They have excuses. They're underachieving. And uh, and 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 Brother Shah, one day I was in the shop, me and the kids, we were there. And, you know, brother, he, he's a barber, so he hires and fires people. You know, he sees what the youth are going through. He tries to give a lot of these local people chances and and uh, in fact has done a great job of introducing islam to a lot of these people and uh you know he, he and so the youth that he hires sometimes they're complaining or they're talking and so one day i was there and this young man came in and he was complaining about a situation and brother shah just went off on him he like gave it to him and so i was like wow that was motivating that was like real you know it's not like uh parents telling you to get off your butt and do whatever this was like real life like he was he was talking about like real life situations he's like i you know he was talking about like there's no excuse not to be able to do something and so and and uh you know his his uh his, he is very very successful at what he does so i'll stop here and i want to ask brother shah so why don't you tell us something about yourself that maybe i missed that would be relevant to our topic First of all, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Those that are going to be watching this video, inshallah. Um, I'm super pleased and happy and honored. Uh, and, and I appreciate very much for allowing me to, to, to be on your video. So thank you and jazakallah khairan from the heart, from here. Uh, one small correction, Sheikh. I don't actually own the shop. I work at the shop. And mm -hmm. the shop that I work at, it's a, it's a very well-known shop in, in, in Buffalo, uh, Anybody who's big, anybody who's top dog, anyone in terms of uh, yeah, bills. The, the, football, the football team. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it, it's a very well-known shop in Buffalo where the general public knows of it well, whether if it's Muslims or non-Muslims. So just a small correction. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny how we met, subhanAllah, because the shake, the the conversation that you've heard me um, had that day with, with that kid it's it's the, the the same conversation takes place almost two three times a day. Sometimes it's Muslims, sometimes it's non-Muslims, and me as a barber, uh, you can't. I don't just cut hair, right? Because if you are just cutting hair, that's not enough for you to be a successful barber. That's not enough for you to be a successful businessman. So you kind of have to give the shoulder sometimes. Uh, you were listening, sometimes you were giving feedback, sometimes you were suggesting, sometimes you were protecting, sometimes you were uh, allowing. There's lots of different factors that goes in because youth in general right now, we are suffering. And, and I consider myself also a youth, even though I'm above 30, but we are, we are suffering greatly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there... It, it the, the term I'm going to use, it's sad. It's it's not the right term, but I feel like they're almost like farm chicken in a way. And it's mm -hmm. so bad that I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, but I, I truly feel this way where they're afraid to lose. They're afraid to take the first step. They're afraid to go out there and learn something new. They're afraid to try something new mm -hmm. just to, or investing in something. That whole aspect of thing, it's not just amongst the non-Muslim. It's Muslims and non-Muslims together. So well, obviously our audience, hopefully, inshallah, a lot of Muslims, but it, it's 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 a great it's a great issue that we are having, and and me on my end on a day to day basis, inshallah, I'm trying my best to motivate, rejuvenate, and encourage our our youngsters to get up and 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 just try something, to do something, and get out of your boundaries, and and just 
just get out of your comfort zone, be uncomfortable for a little bit and be okay with it. Mm. And my experience, um, I feel like I'm talking a whole lot and I'm not letting you ask. Enough no, questions. no, that's fine. That's actually uh, one of the points that um, in the field of psychology, uh, they, they're they also saying a lot of the same things that you're saying is that because everything is so, especially for men, because everything is so result oriented, that people are so worried and paralyzed because of results that they don't try. It's like analysis paralysis. And a lot of our youth are unmotivated because they don't want to fail. And, uh, and so they have, you know, at a subconscious level, a lot of excuses, but this is actually an epidemic that's pervading the world uh, of unmotivated boys. Uh, many books have been written on it. The most popular maybe is the boys adrift, which talks about, so everyone that's listening to this program, they're either young youth who are unmotivated, not achieving their potential, not goal oriented in their life, analysis paralysis, you know, in their comfort zone, in their parents' house, for example, or wherever. And either they are themselves in that situation or they know youth that are in that situation. And that's why this this particular program that I wanted to do, I really wanted to give uh, people some tools that they can begin to, you know, become more uh, motivated uh, in, in the right direction. And so about you, one of the things, so this analysis paralysis issue, I'm going to talk more about it and how I read you from a psychological perspective, because you know, I would love to hear it. I'll follow you a little bit, which I think will be very useful for the youth uh, to know that about you so that they can kind of like have that, that idea. Okay. So uh, tell me about, your experience with the youth and being unmotivated and what are the what does it take for the youth to get to the next level and how do they respond when you say the things that you do like how do they take it uh and and then yeah how what would you say to the muslim youth or the youth in the world really that's very unmotivated and remember you know i really want you to touch on what you said to that young man that day about like how you would just use your creativity and you would not let anything come as an excuse to stop you from earning for your family. Right. Um, a little bit of background about myself, Sheikh. I, I wasn't born here. I was, I wasn't even fully raised here myself. I was born in, I was born in Bangladesh. And when I, when I came here, I was 15 years old. I'm 32. Now uh, you were speaking to a man who literally did not speak a word of English uh, 18 years ago, 16 years ago. You know what I'm saying? I remember my first, I remember my first sentence was, I don't understand. And my second sentence that I've learned was, I don't think so. And I, I wouldn't know, I, I memorized it. So then when I would talk, I would mix up both of them and say, I don't think so. Instead of saying, I don't understand. No. So, you know, I, I've, I've faced the ultimate type of situations where not being able to express myself and um, being shy, being embarrassed of you know, just situations, just surroundings in real life. And also, and I've suffered this for the first four years of my life in America, actually, where I'm trying to fit in. And I'm going to go to the other issues in a minute, why I feel like they're unmotivated and whatnot. Um, it's because I feel like in America where everything is kind of given to you, um, you know, lunch, when you go, when you go to school, lunch is given to you, uh, breakfast is given to you, your parents, um, especially Muslims, they, they care for you. They, they, they kind of baby you in a way where me, you know, at the age of 16, I had to go and provide for my family. I had to walk to school. I remember very, very clearly, like walking my everyday walk to school was mile and a half and wow. it was the uphill. So at the end of my mile and a half, my school was on the hill. So it was harder to get climb the hill and, and go to school. And I would literally walk back to my house and then walk to my job. And mm -hmm. I had a part-time job and I used to make $7 and 25 cents. And, and my, my uncle and my dad, they would give me the whole paycheck goes to my family and they would give me 10 bucks per week or, or sometimes a little bit more 15. And it wouldn't be enough because that's how I actually became a barber because I didn't have the money to cut my own, to cut my own hair. Mm -hmm. 
and and I would I would edge myself up because I wanted to look clean, I wanted to look fresh, and I didn't have the money, so I I would edge myself up and I would just do a little taper, whatever I can, because I wanted to look good, despite the fact that you know the responsibilities I've had on my shoulder. So the responsibilities that I feel that our kids have, it's not like that, like the way it had on me, where my dad didn't speak in English, we didn't have any cars, I had two little sisters, my mom was at home. So I had to go and provide for my family, mm. whether if it's school and then after school, you know, going to college and whatnot, but still working. And there was a moment right after my, I haven't even, I didn't even graduate high school at that point. And I've had three jobs. I used to work for a security company and I used to work for a company, uh, Target, as a matter of fact. Mm. And um, I used to be doing a planogram, like stocking things up on shelves and putting up price tags uh, at the age of 17, 18. Mm. So I, I feel like the reason why who I am today. Were you complaining and, in your mind about your life or did you feel entitled or you're like, no, I have to do this for my family? There, there wasn't any time of complaining because everything you were the I don't have any backup. I am the backup. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have anyone looking after me from from the background saying, OK, I'm going to drop you off. I'm going to pick you up or I'm going to give you. There wasn't any of that. So I, it was it was almost like if I don't do it, then who else is going to do it? Mm -hmm. So at the age of nineteen, alhamdulillah, when I first started practicing Islam, that's when I I got out of my comfort. How do I say it? My, I truly found myself where that part of work ethic was still there. But when you find Islam, it kind of truly shows you and 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 gives you the confidence of no, you are. You are a Muslim. You are this. You are Bengali, and you look like this, and you you were okay with this. No matter no matter how many times you try to change your name, you change your clothes, you try to be someone different, got, try to get new friends, speak like them, talk like them, be like them. At the end of the day, you were still Muslim. You were still brown. You were still Bengali. You were still who you are. Nothing changed. Mm -hmm. So at the age of nineteen, Sheikh, I still remember like when I first started, you know, coming to the masjid and going to Jamaat and, and just being around Islamic activities, it gave me the confidence of who I am, who you are speaking today to. It, this is all part of being. I, I've literally, I've, I've, I remember they put me into talking about Allah after Fajr in a Jamaat for three days. And I'm like, I don't know anything about Allah, but they put me, they put me over there right next to the Imam, but and I had to do it. And it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's being comfortable while being uncomfortable. Mm. I think that's something that's a major key that I want our youth whoever's watching this video to take this from this video if you don't take anything else from this video just take this part where you have to be okay with being uncomfortable it's fine not that you're not gonna lose anything maybe you have a job interview and you know you're uncomfortable because you have three four men that's surrounding you maybe it's one of them is a ladies and she's trying to offer you to shake you know shake your hand and you're like oh man I'm sorry I can't shake your hand. You got to be okay with that. You got to be okay with being different. You got to be okay with being who you are. And when you learn that. Well, you said something very important there from a psychological. So you got to be comfortable with your own identity. Yes, absolutely. You know, you can't escape your identity. If you're going to be trying to be not something you're not, it's going to come in your way. It's going to come in yes. the way. And it shows. And I can imagine there's so many youth there that they have an identity crisis, which is a big part of what's holding them back. They just don't, yes. right? They don't, and 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 they haven't been to a masjid that has a lot of youth or they, they don't know religious people. Like some people, some places in America, you know, you're like the only high school student or you're like the only few people going to college that are Muslim. And it, it is uncomfortable, I guess, for a lot of people, uh, especially with all the, the stereotypes and everything that's that's going on and of course a lot of the identity crisis that's put into children from their own parents because they're so worried about being muslim themselves and the kids can see that but one thing that you just said is really phenomenal and that is that uh, and and uh, a lot of uh, psychologists talk about this a lot of scientists talk about this which is the 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 human brain the cognitive part our conscious part is designed to find problems not solve problems primarily mm. okay you we tend to solve more problems in the background of our mind in our subconscious level and so uh just as one example 
you know, um, uh, Newton or or um, uh, Einstein or any of these guys, they would have a problem, but they knew and they understood very well that it's just a cognitive thing. And to get the solution, they have to do, they have to actually back off. Mm -hmm. They have to surrender. What happens is that, you know, this, this analysis paralysis happens many times because we're trying to solve a problem with that mechanism that's not designed to solve a problem, which is our cognitive self. What you have to do, and that's what happens when you trust Allah. Mm -hmm. You see that this is a problem and you then let it surrender, you surrender it to Allah. And then the background starts working on that problem, your subconscious level. Maybe you can relate to this at some level. And then Absolutely. you'll get some creative idea like, oh, why don't I do that? You know, and, and so being religious does have that benefit that you're not only at the cognitive level, but you're actually using that part of your brain that solves problems rather than just looks for problems, which happens when you surrender. So you go from activity to surrender. And that's how some psychologists see it, that either you're in a state of surrendering, which is your subconscious level, or you're actively thinking about how to solve it. When you're, as long as you're actively thinking, you don't really get the ideas. You only get it once you take a rest or once you go to sleep or once you take a break. And that's when most of the discoveries have actually happened are not at the lab. It's like when people are away from the lab. That's when they get the biggest inspiration. They don't get the biggest inspiration when they're on the table writing a book, but when they're out about talking to their friends, something clicks. And I think that uh, a lot of girls and a lot of boys are stuck because there's so much in their their rational phase. They're like, I have to solve this. And it becomes overwhelming. Um, I don't know if you can relate to that, but yeah, I'll let you take that. Um. In a way, I can because some of my strongest moments of my deen, some of the strongest Imani period I've had in my life, Sheikh, you won't believe it, at the worst times and at the worst place possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, 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 as, as a man, I'm a lot more mature now because I'm older and whatnot. But Sheikh, I remember very clearly that just at literally at the age of nine, I'm 19, 20 years old. I'm in my school. I'm in college. I'm surrounded by girls that are half dressed, even Muslims and non-Muslims together. And I'm over there going to school with a Tawban and Bugri praying in front of <laughs> a thousand people in the main hallway and not caring about anything. And subhanAllah, Sheikh, in, in our school, the, the college that I went to, we were the first people to establish an MSA. And yeah. We were the first people to establish a prayer room. Yeah. And now from a club perspective, we would have the most amount of people, even non-Muslims at our event, and it would be the most successful. We would we'd sell like we'd have bake sale and things like that. We'd generate the most amount of money just from our things. Mm. And and Shay, this is one thing that I kind of want to touch. It's energy. I'm I, I'm a firm believer in energy. Mm. Energy is something so real that if you really believe in something, like Allah doesn't let you fail. Like I'm having goosebumps as I'm talking to you about this. Like mm. if you have a vision of something, if you really want to do something, and you put your heart and mind and soul to it. You are not going to fail. And if you fail, you may fail temporarily, but in, in a bigger picture, you have learned something so much that whatever it is that, that you feel like you failed, that was actually the, whether it's the time or the money or the energy, it's the tuition you've paid to, to get to the next step. It just made your, you just made yourself a better person. Mm -hmm. So even now I'm, I've gotten fired from a job at Verizon Wireless when I was when I was 20 years old. And I, you know, I first started growing my beard out and I was an SOS representative. I was a contractor there. And I would make badges. I, I would work under the HR department to give the new contractors and employees their badges and whatnot and put information in the system. And at that time, I used to work at the second largest building in, in, in after Pentagon in America, in, in Basking Ridge, New Jersey, mm. in, in the Verizon Wireless headquarters. And I would talk about Dean and somehow, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, you, I, I didn't know in the corporate world, you were not supposed to talk about religion like that. Yeah. And I would sometimes openly give dawah to people and I started growing my beard out. And after like about six months to a year, my boss called me and asked me to trim my beard. Mm. And I said, no, and I let the job go. Wow, subhanAllah. Shake 13 years later, I literally cut some of the highest people in Buffalo, whether yeah. they're football players or, or uh, I've cut 
players from the Bills. I've cut VPs of top software companies in Buffalo. I'm not going to mention those names. I've, right, I've, I've cut the vice president of this company who's from Belgium. It literally like such a high position person. And they are asking me about Islam. And the man just sent me a picture. And I'm going to show you. I'm gonna, I will show you really quick that this is this is really happening with me in real life. This guy sent me a picture of this. Okay. The VP of this company. Yeah. And 13 years later. I was fired from my job for talking about Dean and for being a Muslim and being wanted to look like a Muslim. And 13 years later, I'm at my job where people are asking me about Islam. Mm. It's the total opposite. So if you are, if you if you stick to your ground and if you stay firm in what you believe in and not change yourself and not let loose and not let go of yourself and keep and hold on to your Dean and hold on to yourself, whether if it's your cultural background, whether if it's your Dini principles, whether if it's just just you are whoever you are. Maybe you like chicken nuggets and orange juice. Maybe you like whatever. Maybe you like chicken fingers. Stick to it. And you're going to see how much respect you're going to get from other people. Because at the end of the day, people will see right through your bull crap. If you're trying to be like someone else, they see right through it. So don't try to change who you are and be be firm in what you believe in. And inshallah, inshallah, Allah is going to make you successful. And so you, you said something very important, which I want you to touch a little bit more. You said that nothing can stop you, or you said something to this, that nothing can stop you from being successful. Why do you believe that? Because I don't think majority of the youth believe that. They think that Allah has closed the doors on them, rather than the default being, no, Allah has opened the doors for me. I'm Allah's masterpiece creation, human being. And, uh, you know, Allah doesn't, uh, you know, Allah gave us two hands, two feet, a brain. What's stopping us from achieving? He made us the Khalifa on earth, his right, his representatives on earth. Why would we fail, right? Like there's no reason. You don't give somebody a job and set up them for failure. Allah doesn't make us Khalifas just to like fail. So that was one very important point. And the second thing that you touched upon was that when you did fail, you didn't take it as oh my god you know i'm a failure a failure you took it more like okay this is the tuition i paid to get to the next level i think that's extremely important so please talk about those two things about the feeling that you know this there's no reason for allah not to help me i i want to thank one person i don't know if he's going to be watching this this brother's name is Fahim Mojoala from Grand Island. Oh, yes, yes. He, he, and I want to thank him because I've known this brother for a decade, over almost over a decade. Yeah. And he taught me this lesson, Sheikh. And 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 inshallah, inshallah, I hope that you get to have him on your on your chat. No, I did this once day. already, and I plan to a few more times, inshallah. Yeah. I've learned many, many things from him. And what, what you just mentioned is something that I've actually learned from him and from his experience. That when you do fall. You are not, you are falling just to get back up. Mm. When I, when I went to Khuruj for the first time, when I went to Jamaat for the first time, when I was, when I was, you know, leaving, the brother told me, you are not leaving. You are going home just to come back. Mm. So Sheikh, I'm having, literally, I'm having goosebumps all over my body right now, just talking about, because I, I feel like I'm seeing my, myself 10, 12, 13 years ago, um, First of all, I'm a man, right? We all men. We, uh, right now, hopefully, a lot of men are watching this video, and I'm, I'm talking to mostly the boys. Girls also, inshallah, but mostly the boys, because those, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us men. And if you look at the past, whether if they are prophets or, it was nothing against the girls, nothing against the ladies. And I love my sisters, mashallah, and, and our sisters are doing amazing things, whether internationally and That's locally. The problem, and that they're, they're achieving more than the brothers sometimes. More than the boys. Yeah. But it was the men who was making the differences from the beginning. It was men who cut down the mountains and made flats. It was men who made roads into the desert. It was men who went and dug things inside the mine. It was men who went and made tunnels inside the ocean and between the mountains. It was men who went and found diamonds. It was men who made... It was men who was making the biggest of difference in the world, Sheikh. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the men that we knew of before and past, we, we lost that. And, 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 and they feel like they're just kind of locked up in their own bubble in this weird way. And again, I, 
you know, being in America and, and our society and our surroundings have a lot to do with it, but they truly feel like that. And the reason why I feel like I'm unstoppable, number one, I, I depend on Allah, right? I depend on Allah, Azza wa Jal, right? So whatever it is that I really want to do, if I put my mind and heart and soul to it, and if it's hired and if it's hired for me for my dunya and akhirah, which is dua that I'm always making before mm -hmm. I do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and give my best shot. And if it's not hired, if it's not good for me, then Allah won't let me get to it anyways. Mm -hmm. Allah won't let me fail. Allah sees what I'm doing. Allah sees what what type of hard work and what type of energy I'm really putting in. Mm -hmm. So ain't no way I'm gonna fail. And if I fall for now. I'm only getting better for the next time. It's all about how you look at it. A glass is always half empty or half full. Yeah. So it's your perspective. When you put sunglasses on, yes, you're putting colorful sunglasses and making yourself look like how it is outside, but the outside is still the same. Mm -hmm. So it's you. You can go ahead and change things, like the way you see it. Sheikh, when I used to go for interviews back in the day, I would legit listen to Soldier of Allah and those little talks about Khalid bin Walid and how... They murdered soldiers after soldiers of Romans and Persians. And I'm, 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 Sheikh, ain't no, when I go to an interview and I just came back from listening to a lecture about Khalid bin Walid and Saad bin Abi Waqqas, ain't nothing stopping me. Mm. Ain't nothing stopping me because whoever I'm facing for this interview is much smaller than whoever Khalid bin Walid has faced. Mm. Mm. And if he didn't care, then why do I care? Yeah. So this not caring is a key component to success, right? Because then you don't have to think about what will people think? What will people say? You're just focused on yourself and your goals without worrying about what your friends may look at you as. And I think that this idea of like trusting in Allah, what do you think about entitlement? People feeling entitled, the youth feeling entitled. It's 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 a it's a very very big issue here, and I see this every day. I see this every day, Muslims and non-Muslims. It's like they, I don't I don't know, Sheikh. I don't I can't really tell you the reasons because you obviously know more. Whether if it's their TV programs or or maybe TikTok, I don't know what it is. It just they feel like they deserve everything. They they feel like they should be given everything. They should feel like, they feel like uh, the society owes them something mm. rather than. Society is not like that, right? You have to go and get something because mm -hmm. people when 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 people are dependent on when people are depending on you, you have no option. Like me, my family were looking over my shoulder because they were depending on me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have nobody else to depend on because I depend on Allah and I depend on me. Even till this day, Shay, even till this day, yeah. And nobody owes me anything. I owe other people. Mm -hmm. Right, it's, it's it's how you look at things. What do my parents owe me, or my parents have raised me, clothed me, fed me my whole life. Now it's the time to give back. Mm. So I feel like the youth of today is like, oh, what did my parents do for me? Yeah, yeah. You stupid moron! It's not what your parents did for you. Is what have you done for your parents? Yeah. Excuse my language. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. So, uh, I mean, that's very important in terms of your perspective of life, right? I mean, always kind of like taking it easy because, you know, your parents are there, taking advantage of them, and they have hopes in you, but then you're never really, you don't care about their hopes, their energy, their, that they put into you. Um, you know, they didn't grow you up so that you just live in the basement all your life, for example. Uh so it's very important to be cognizant of, of this entitlement. And I think some of the problem comes that we even feel entitled with Allah. Like, mm. you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want us to feel entitled. He wanted us to, like Allah said, I gave you the tools. I gave you the two hands, the two legs, the brain. You know, now go and, and ask for me for guidance and I'll give you the guidance. And now you go, you're doing your thing. I'm not going to give you handouts. Meaning there's no miracles here, right? I mean, in, in the normal sense of the word, uh, that you have to like show Allah what you're what you're willing to do for him or for his deen or in you know, Iqbal says one of the Muslim poets, he says, if you're not gonna become become true to yourself, if you're not gonna become true to Allah, at least become true to yourself. And I think this whole entitlement uh 
does uh, make the boys un unmotivated because they're trained almost to expect something to be given to them. Yes. Uh, you're, you're, you're absolutely, you're absolutely true. Um, they feel entitled and they also feel like there aren't ways, there aren't, it just, I graduate high school, okay, that I got, I take a loan now and I go to college and I get a four-year degree, it's just so systematic, you know, this whole process. And then after I, you know, go get a degree, I hopefully I get a job. And after my job, when I'm 26, 27, hope, you know, before 30, I get married. And then I, you know, I, I, a few years later, I have a baby. And it's just the same, the routine shape. And it doesn't have to be like that, right? Look at some Especially of our- Especially now, things. because now uh, the economy has changed so much. It's it's become what we call the gig account economy, right? People that are doing gigs are earning more than even- college degrees i'm not saying not to get a college degree I'm not saying no, i'm just saying that that there are many more avenues at this point to uh to achieve in some senses anyway yes i i i agree 100 percent. i um even me becoming a full-time barber shake i used to cut hair i told you since i was 16 years old and it was only about four or five years ago that i became a full-time barber Hmm. And even 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 though I, I I sound all that confident now, and I, I've you know I I broke through all my chains and shackles and whatnot, and I broke through the cage. But even me five years ago, even that bothered me a little bit. Like, how can I depend on uh, an income that's not guaranteed, rather than me having a job that pays me a certain amount every week? And I was before I you know became a barber, I used to be a business development manager for a company called High Operator. They're um, an e-commerce company. Mm -hmm. And and I had to get fired from my job. I had to get fired from my job to go become a full-time barber, even though in the same shop, I was already cutting hair part-time. Mm -hmm. And the owner of the shop, every single time I would go in and get a haircut, he would say, come and be a barber, come and make this money. And I would say, no, man, I can't take a pay cut. Mm -hmm. But in all reality... It's not a pay cut. It's a pay. It's a pay up. I'm getting paid more. Mm. Right. Mm. So at the end of the day, it's, it's relying on a lot and relying on yourself and being um, learning something on your own, a, a skill that you develop. Right. There are, as again, there are so many ways. Right. A kid doesn't have to go and learn something at the age of 18 after he graduated high school or at the age of 16. You can learn something at the age of 10, 12, do carpentry, do anything like clean if you don't have the money to start a business okay go make the money go clean snow we, in buffalo it snows a lot go shovel some yards and see how much money ten dollars you do 10 houses that's hundred dollars hmm. go cut grass in the summer everybody's yeah. everybody's everyone's grass is growing go cut the grass and see how much money they give you chick i seen this one um one lady on instagram you know now we're in the tech industry and, and everything that you do people want to watch all she does is clean Clean houses, clean this, clean this thing, clean, organizes clean. So I you know how she's got like this ad that pop up. So if you just somehow be on their page one time, other things, you know, many more times, those ads are going to pop up. So I watched it maybe for four or five times because I'm I know I'm in the, the housing business and I always need people to clean and whatnot. And I go on her page and I think it was like my second or third time or something. And I go on the website because she's got a whole website. And I go on the website, Shake, she got this whole thing systematically done where it tells you, like, you take a picture of your room and put how many furnitures you have and mm -hmm. why you need to be cleaned and this and that. And it tells you the price right then and there. I try to get her booked. She's from Philadelphia. She is booked months after months after months. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is no schedule available. Yeah. So if you are truly, if you truly want to do something, in this society now, there are a hundred different ways you can make money. You mentioned you can go buy something from thrift stores, sell them on eBay, go buy something from uh, any, like what, what are those, uh, uh, those lost and found, I don't know what they call it, Salvation Army, go yeah. buy something from there, sell them on Facebook Marketplace, go give rides to your customers. Uh, there are 60,000 people that get out of the stadium every time there's a Bills game, every time there's a hockey game, every time there's a concert. There aren't 60,000 Uber drivers. 
Yeah. There aren't 60,000, there aren't 40,000 Uber drivers after a concert or a hockey game. Yeah. Every other day, something is going down. Every other day, something is happening. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and give them rides. Like there are so many ways. You could, yesterday, a lady came in and she made um, a, a barber razor out of wood and it said the barber's name on it. Mm -hmm. Right. And she came in and, and gifted it to the barber and the barber came and showed it to us. There were 16 barbers in there. Hmm. And right next to this barber, a shop, there's a salon where there's four ladies in there. Hmm. Shake, if each one of those things cost hundred dollars or 200 bucks, that, that's 3,200 bucks just from the barbershop alone. And every single one of us, we want one because we want our name written on it. And it's just such an amazing thing to just hang on to your wall or something. Mm. so if you really want to go ahead and make it it's no excuses it's just you you stopping you and you are the biggest blocker of your own self that's mm. i i truly feel this way yeah i mean the the case studies are very clear i'll, I'll just i'm going to give you one starting example and then i'm going to give you an example that you can relate to because it has to do with sales so uh plastic surgery is how people started to study some of the cycle. So like people have a certain impression of themselves, right? So there was this man, for example, he had an impression that uh, I can't speak in public because mm -hmm. he had a scar in his face. And as soon as he uh, gets the plastic surgery done, now he's like one of the best speakers in the world. That's right. It was just that change of your own perception of yourself. Right. Had he spoken, right? Even with the scar, he would have been popular, but he just had that self-perception about himself. Now, let me give you another example. This is the one that you'll relate to. So one of the case studies that they studied is that there was a man. He was a salesperson. This is why you would relate to this. He was a salesperson, and he was given a small area to be a salesperson there. They were trying him out, you know, and he made $5,000 in commission. His mm. boss thought, wow, if I give him a bigger place... Like instead of a small district, I give him a bigger, more wealthy district. He'll make, he'll make, he'll really like go off the roof. And so, uh, so they put him there and he still made $5,000. So the, his boss is like, well, okay, I guess that was just for that month. So he puts him back to this small district. He still makes $5,000. And so uh, anyway, so the, the case study is looking at this and what they're saying is that he was mentally just thinking he couldn't go beyond $5,000 because he was self-sabotaging himself, right? And so as soon as he made the $5,000 when he was in the bigger district, he started thinking that he's sick. He started coming up with excuses. He felt like, you know, whatever limitations he had on himself, and no matter where they placed him, he always made $5,000. This was the, the, the point. And so... I think that our youth that are unmotivated have this feel, this perception of themselves uh, where they are limiting themselves. And, and they think that things, life should come and somehow just hand them their upgrades and they don't have to work hard for it. Or, you know, like when you were telling me about uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, you know, you could do this and make a hundred dollars just from doing this. I'm just thinking like, I've heard youth say, yeah, I'll have to work all that just to get a hundred dollars. Right. So like, what do you mean? How... <laughs> what do you, what do you mean? Right. You know, I, I'm I... sure you, you've seen this and it's like, okay, so what do you want? $10,000. <laughs> you know, it's like, they want, uh, they don't want to start off small. They want to just jump. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it, it, I see this every day. Like, let's say um, they want to go, they want to go buy something to eat. Like I, I see the barbers in our own, or just the customers. Um, oh, it's only $5 for a burger. Um, but when you, when, when you, when you ask them, do you have that $5? They don't have it, but they also don't know how to go get it either. And they won't do any work to get the $5 because to them, the $5 is sold so minimum that they don't want to work a little bit to get the five dollars. Mm -hmm. I will do I will do that just to get five dollars. But if you don't have the five dollars, you will never have fifty dollars because five dollars is part of fifty. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know how to get five, how will you get fifty? Yeah. 
So I, I see this every single day, Sheikh. And one more thing that I want to add today. Um, I was cutting this brother's hair and I was having the similar type of talk and grow some juice, be confident and, and, and break through your chain and whatnot. And, and he said something so beautiful and he said, Shah, and, and it's kind of relevant to what you mentioned about the plastic surgery. He said, you kind of have to do something to have that juice also. You follow what I'm saying? Right, like right. This juice is not going to grow on your own. Mm. So like I tell him, like, no, when you just just like I would when I when I would go for interviews before before that night, the, the night before I would have a mirror in front of me and I would talk back and forth, ask questions and I would answer back. And I was telling him to do that. And, and he wasn't really buying it. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I felt like he wasn't really doing it. And that and right after that, he told me, Shah, you got to do something to, to grow that juice. And I realized that that person who told me he's right. In his life, he hasn't faced any serious trials and tribulation, or he has his his back was never against the wall like that for him to be uncomfortable and be okay with it and get out of get out of the situation and be creative and trust in Allah and just go in to shoot for it. Hmm. Right? So sometimes I feel like you purposely have to put yourself in that situation where maybe the situ the real life situation hasn't happened yet. Hmm. But if you go ahead and put yourself in a situation on purpose, on your own, where you don't know what to do, you don't know how to act, but that really builds your inner system, your inner growth, your inner development, your inner confidence. Hmm. So that's something that I would suggest to our youth today. It's is, like a type of what we can call visualizing yourself. Correct. In those yeah, but not, not only necessarily visualizing yourself where, let's say you're at a job, for example. Yeah. And I would and I personally would take many. I worked for BMW and Mini Cooper for five years. Mm. But and I was very happy. It was one of my best jobs I've ever had. Mm. But in my five years, even though I was very happy, I can't tell you how many interviews I have attended because mm. I naturally liked I want I, I wasn't the best at interviews. And I, you know, my, I'm, I don't I, I never grew up here. So my, I have an accent and, and whatever answers they would, you know, whatever question they would ask me, sometimes I would get stuck. So I wanted to get out of that. So I would go to interviews and I would, I would just try my best to give my best. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to build myself. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten shake so many interviews and I've gotten rejected so many times, but I didn't let that phase me because those were, there's basically like simulators. You follow what I'm saying? Those weren't mm -hmm. real life scenarios. Right, 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 yeah. But they helped me to get where I am today. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So let me ask you this. If if I'm today that young man in the barbershop and I say, you know, uh, my life is just not working out. Uh, you know, I, I'm not making money. Um, and... I just have a lot of excuses. What would you say to the young Muslim man or the young anyone? Uh, they just are stuck mentally as so deeply that they just can't. They want they want to be successful in their imagine imaginative level, but they don't want to take step A, B, C. They don't want to take that step. What do you say to your son? What does a father say? What does a brother say? What does an imam say to the young youth that don't want to work, that don't want to take that step? Um, before you say anything, you you got to kind of... Feeling good about yourself is very important, right? Hmm. So, and I'm not... What I mean by feeling good is like, what I would suggest is I would I would find ways to give them have them look at their own blessings. So if they don't want to go outside and work, I would, I would, I would turn it. I would say, look at your own blessings. So like there was one kid the other day and he was mad at Allah. Mm. And he was like, I've been asking for guidance for so long. Muslim kid, Muslim kid. I've been asking Allah for guidance for so long. And I have Allah, ne Allah never answered me. Mm. So it's not that he left Islam, but he hasn't been to the masjid in months, probably years. Mm -hmm. And I see this kid every day, or well, not every day, almost every week, every other week. Mm -hmm. And Sheikh, this is going to sound really funny, but I, I, I turn around and I ask that kid, I say, bro, 
Don't laugh. But when was the last time you thanked Allah and you made two rakah for your whole dasa nabaram that you do number two with? Because let me tell you, my own uncle, he passed away because he couldn't take number two. Mm. My own uncle couldn't take, his feces went inside his body mm. and he couldn't, his, his bag was attached. And there was a bag attached to his stomach. Mm. And, and it, it couldn't go on like that for so long. He passed away, Rahimahullah, not, not too long ago. Last year, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So when I asked that kid, when was the last time you thanked Allah for that? He, not, no answer. Mm. Sheikh, when was the last time I thanked Allah and for, for, for what I have? So the, the, the scenarios that I would, the suggestion that I would do for the kids, I would, look, I would ask them to look at your own blessings, what you already have. You, whether if it's your parents, whether if it's uh, if you're being dropped off or not every day to the masjid, if you're being dropped off to your uh, high school, or is there a school bus that's picking you up? Do you have more than just two pairs of shoes? Because let me tell you, I didn't have. My shoes were, shake. I had I had shoes that said BK, British Nikes. And and the kids, I, that's, that was my only pair. I played soccer with them shoes. I went to gym with them shoes. That was my everyday shoe that I went to work with. I went to school with for every single outfit. It was just one pair of shoes that I had. And it said BK. And the kids would make fun of me and say, well, he's wearing Burger King shoes. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah. But imagine I imagine I got stuck there. Right? Imagine, oh, I, I don't want to go to school anymore because the kids make fun of me. Or I only have one pair of shoes. So I would look at, I would ask them to look at their own blessings. And number two, I would give them the story of my life. Just don't let anything stop you. Be confident in who you are. Go out there and do something. Mm. Do, uh, do anything. Like sell t-shirts, sell lemonade, sell coffee. Sell, mm. there are, Jake, we see these three kids that sell samosas in front, in front of our masjid every day during That's Jamaat. Right. Yeah. Iftar is not till 747. Mm. But during Jamaat, they know it's their peak time. Even though people are fasting, and the sambusas are only dollar a piece. Now they're probably three, four, five or whatever. But these kids on every single Friday for the last five years, they're, they're Syrian kids. Yeah, they come and sell the sambusas. Yeah. And people are buying them. Yeah. Because you know why? They come from Syria. I talked to one of the kids and he said there were two times a bomb was being dropped on me on right next to me and they didn't explode. Mm, subhanAllah. And therefore, he's here today because he has learned that the blessing that you and I already have, he didn't have. So now he's relentless. He's he don't he doesn't care what he has to do. But he's gonna go out there and make that dollar, make them buy whatever it is that he got to do to go ahead and get himself wherever he has to go. Yeah, I mean, he goes to our masjid and then he'll go to Zakir. Connecticut. Yeah, I mean, he'll go all over the place. All over the place, and there are three brothers. Yeah, and uh, you know they just. Like you said, they're motivated, and 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 I think this is really you've hit a key point. Um, counting your blessings because we do that in Fatiha, right? Before we ask for guidance, which is the action. So Alhamdulillah, right? So only when you are understanding or realizing that something's already coming to you, uh, will you get out of that mode of being stuck and be able to move forward, like on Sirat al Mustaqim. And I think that's very important. I think our youth, they're in a state of kufr. Kufr meaning the blessings are stopped or thanklessness or ingratitude or they're covering themselves from the reality of their situation, which is that they're receiving plenty. But they just want somebody to come and make them the CEO of some big company. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And, and I, you know, the... the the they're really like it's a state of being in a delusion it's not reality that they're in a lot of these youth and and the minute they fall into some uh some problem either with their partner or with their customer uh you know they they tend to like complain and give up and one of the big other problems is that they they'll start a project but never finish it oh yeah Definitely, I, I was a victim of that too. I had to get out. I had to get out. Get out. Get out, get myself out of that. I was. I was a victim of that also. So what starting something and not finishing it. That you know that they start something and then they don't finish it. it it's it, also it, technically the same problem. It's not believing that Allah will help you. 
Correct. You know, and there's a verse in the Quran that Allah says in Surah Al-An'am towards the end Allah says if you don't think Allah will help you Allah says this in the Quran if you don't think Allah will help you then you might as well get a rope and choke yourself to death mm. this is what the Quran says if you don't Allah. think Allah will help you right you you, you uh, then get a rope and choke yourself because if you don't mean Allah is like you really think I'm not going to help you <laughs> then you know this is what you should do right and so right. Uh, we have to have a firm belief that Allah will Allah will help and protect and guide uh, his believing friends. He, he, if Allah is helping the non-Muslims so much, then imagine how much Allah would help the believers. And Allah loves the youth. You know, in Nahum Fityatun, Allah talks about the youth of Dawud the youth of uh, Yahya, the youth of Isa the youth of many prophets, the seven sleepers that went to the cave that are generally called the seven sleepers. In Nahum Fityatun, they were young men. Allah loves young men, but young men that are like go-getters, right? That that they believe Allah will help them. And they believe that Allah has already given them the tools to get what they want. You know, they already have the brain. They have the creativity. They, it's just our own excuses that come in the way. That's all it is. That's all it is. And the Quran says, Inna insana ala nafsihi basira. Man has full insight to himself. Even if he throws excuses. And what happens is we believe in our excuses more than we believe in ourselves. Right. And and I think that really comes in the way. And so, uh, is there anything lasting that you want to say to the Muslim youth uh, before we wrap up today, inshallah? For sure. Um, also, being consistent and trusting the process in, in sales and marketing, that's something that we learn what we talk about every day is trusting the process. So if there are A, B, C, before you get to D, sometimes you may not be able to get to D, E, F, right? But you still got to go ahead and do the same exact process over and over and over and over again and being consistent. It's not like, okay, for Fajr, I couldn't have Fushu. So, okay, I skipped Doha. No, you still got you still got to go ahead and come to Doha. You may not have proper concentration in Dohor. It doesn't mean you go ahead and skip Asr. You still got to go ahead and come to Asr and try your level best. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully, inshallah, by the time you catch Maghrib, it may be 50-50, but by the time you catch your Isha and Tarawih, mashallah, you all, you all in there. Right? Maybe not the first day, maybe not the second day, but the third and the fourth day, it's going to happen. So if you are consistent at something and if you're trusting that process, it's, it's going to go through. My message to the youth is, don't don't stop yourself because the only person who's stopping is yourself and nobody else. Yeah. Allah has open doors, make dua and just go through whatever it is, whether if it's respecting your parents, whether if it's getting out of doing cutting grass or making t-shirts or selling flowers or selling shrimp, do anything, but just try something new. Don't don't be afraid to lose. Wallah, wallah, you're not losing. By the you're way, this is the fastest way to become a millionaire is to make t-shirts. Design. Most, really. most people have become most most like the the area where people have made a million dollars the fastest is t-shirts selling t-shirts so you gotta it. be a go get getter right i mean right. you gotta just sell a million t-shirts <laughs> that's you know that's uh that's just uh but that's like you said you just gotta be creative and you gotta do what you gotta do and a lot of these yeah. youth, they're going to learn the hard way because their parents are not going to be there for them forever. And then they'll be in the position that, that you know, where they are the backup, like you said. <laughs> so, right. and, and especially, you know, so if they, if they don't learn now, they're going to learn later, but uh, it's better to learn Maybe sooner. Maybe too late by then. Yeah. And, and Sheikh, one, one, one thing that I, uh, you know, we all face problems in life, right? Um, You know, you and I are adults now, so we have, different type of issues than, than the issues that you've had when you were maybe, you know, in your 20s or the issues that I've had when I was in my early teens. The reality is that there is an end of life, right? You, if you are living now, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to end someday. You're going to die. So just like how your grandpa was alive at, the, at one point, your great-grandpa was alive at one point, his father was alive at one point, 
and he had to go ahead and earn, uh, you know, earn and provide for his family. And he had to go ahead and face issues with his bills and, and with his kids and not being D and E or, or they're not motivated to do something or whatever problems they were facing. They got through it and then they died. Mm -hmm. Right. So the issues that you feel like you are having today in this dunya, just know these issues won't be there as soon as you close your eyes. So what you got to lose? Because you, when you, when you first started, when you were born, you were born naked. You had nothing. You were absolutely, you had absolutely nothing. You didn't even have a piece of clothes. Nothing. Right. Now you have something. You have t-shirts. You have clothes. You have a little bit of money in your pocket. You have resources available you have facebook instagram you have people like yourself like the sheikh you have masjid community you have surrounding you have so much support yet you were so afraid to lose but what you got to lose if you ain't never had nothing in the first place and at the end you ain't gonna have nothing anyways right but right. you are so afraid to lose mm -hmm. what you already have mm -hmm. so so i i say that if you have five dollars Go ahead and see what you can do with that five dollars. Yeah. If you only have five dollars and you can't do nothing about it, find a way that you the way you got yeah, to Yeah, you five. said that that day too. You said, you know, I forget what you said. You said, give me a gas full of tank and five dollars and see what I can make of that. See what I can do. Shake up my I, inshallah, do. inshallah, inshallah, ya Rab. I will never be broke, Shake. Inshallah, ya Rab. Inshallah, inshallah. Ya, yeah. ya, I make I make dua to Allah that including myself and all the people that are dini and our brothers from the masjid. I want all the brothers to be rich. There's nothing wrong with being rich and wealthy. I would rather me have money than the Tom, Dick, and Harry outside who's having money. You know why? Because if I have money, inshallah, inshallah, hopefully I can to do something. Mm -hmm. Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anh, before he gave everything away, he was a rich man. Yeah. Let me give everything away. Let me, yeah. get the, let me go ahead and work hard so I can give something. Yes. But if I'm yeah, sitting at home being complacent, there is no way I can give anything because I don't have anything in the first place. Yeah. So don't don't be afraid, man. Just get up out there and do something. Just do anything. Like don't be afraid to lose. And if you lose once, if you lose twice, if you lose third time, inshallah, inshallah, you are not gonna keep on losing because you're gonna be learning from your experience. You're gonna win someday. Yeah, I want to end with this uh, example that I read. Um, uh, this. That, you know, when you're a kid, and you're in your natural state, when you're a baby, right? How many people, if they were a baby and tried to walk once or two times or 10 times and fell every time, they'd just give up, right? But, <laughs> but when you're in your natural state, like that baby, right? Just purely just nothing is stopping that baby from learning to stand up and walk, right? But if it had been any of these brothers of ours that are unmotivated teenagers or unmotivated young adults they would have tried 10 times and just crawled for the rest of their lives you know if, you know instead of like developing but the the natural instinct of the human in the fitra state when you're not mentally handicapped is to keep moving forward is to keep growing right and not not to make these excuses babies don't make excuses oh well you know i guess i'm never going to learn to walk uh, because I fell down 10, 10 times, you know, that's not how Allah made human beings. From the very beginning in our fitrah state, we're completely like relentless, relentless to our goals. I mean, a baby will do anything to get what it wants, right? And it it will not accept any excuses. Not that, at all. Yeah, I mean, that's how we're born. But now. Uh, shaitan because of whatever situations we're in we just we become we become we we're mentally hand, handicapped we're make, we're our own worst enemies in a sense so yeah so inshallah we'll end there today that was a very very important conversation i've been wanting to have for a very long time thank Zakallahu you khairan. Khairan. may allah yeah. bless you and everything you do i mean allahumma amin ya rab Thank you for uh, coming. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah. And, and I have one last thing to say is. Yes. Don't just listen to me. This is for the youth. Don't just listen to me. Listen to my message. Even if you don't listen to me, inshallah, listen to the message, whatever I have to say, listen to the sheikh, whatever he has to say. The, the opportunities are endless and you are a lot smarter and a lot greater and a lot better than who you think you are. And I have faith in you. 
that you can do it, inshallah. So next time I see you, I'm going to ask you, so what did you learn from this video? Yeah, and, and if, if you know other people who need this, please share it with them too, inshallah. Jazakumullah. Absolutely. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.